House of the Dragon has been a complete blast and many of you may be wondering why is everyone so hyped up about Vega in the show. For those of you who have read the book, Fire and Blood, you'd know why Vega is such an instrumental character in Dance of the Dragons. Whereas for those of you who have yet to read the book, I am going to break it down for you in this video. But hey, there will be spoilers ahead. By the way, if you love the video, please subscribe to my channel. A single click from your end means a lot to me as it helps grow my channel and encourages me to continue producing videos like this. Now, back to Vagar. Vagar, known as the Queen of All Dragons, is the dragon who was ridden by Visenya Targaryen during the War of Conquest. Aegon Targaryen changed the rules. That's why every child alive still knows his name, 300 years after his death. Aegon and his sisters. Well? It wasn't just Aegon riding his dragon. It was Rhaenys and Visenya too. Correct. Student of history, are you? Rhaenys rode Miraxis. Visenya rode Vega. I'm sure I knew that when I was a boy. Visenya Targaryen was a great warrior. Although during this time she was the smallest of the trio that included Balerion and Miraxis, Vega was still large enough to swallow a horse hole and her flames could melt any armour. A hundred years later, during the reign of Viserys Targaryen, she is the largest of all known living dragons and the last remaining dragon from the days of Aegon's conquest in Westeros. The colour of Vega's scales, horns, wings, wing bones and spinal crests as well as the colour of her flame are not mentioned in the books. However, the artist commissioned for the 2021 A Song of Ice and Fire calendar Sam Hawk asked for clarification from George R. R. Martin's team and was told Vega was bronze with greenish-blue highlights and bright green eyes. By the time of the Dance of the Dragons, Vega was the hardened survivor of a hundred battles, had grown almost as large as Balerion, and was the oldest and largest of the dragons in Westeros. Her roar was so powerful that it could shake the very foundations of storms and and no living dragon could match her for size or ferocity. Vega hatched on Dragonstone during the Century of Blood, and she was named for a Valyrian god just like Balerion and Meraxus were. She was claimed by Visenya Targaryen, the sister wife of Aegon, before she married the Conqueror. Vega flew with her fellow beasts, Meraxus and Balerion, and their riders to Westeros. She was utilised during the War of Conquest, being flown into battle in the waters of Gulltown, where she and her rider Visenya destroyed the Aryan fleet. During the battle that became known as the Field of Fire, for the only time in history, all three of the original Targaryen dragons took the sky at the same time. Together, Vega, Meraxus and Balerion the Black Dread killed 4,000 men, burning them all alive. Vega was later flown during the subjugation of the Vale of Arryn, albeit far less bloodily. When Shara Arryn confronted Queen Visenya, the Vale woman found her young son King Ronald in the company of the Valyrian warrior queen. Ronald begged for a ride on Vega, which Visenya allowed, but on the condition that Arryn surrendered their crown. While Ronald flew on the mighty dragon, Visenya collected the crowns and the swords of the Vale. The dragon also fought in the first Dornish War, destroying every Dornish stronghold they found, with the sole exception of Sunspear. Following the deaths of Rhaenys and Meraxis in 10 AC at Hellholt in Dawn, Visenya and Aegon burned every Dornish stronghold at least once, during a two-year period known as the Dragon's Wrath. After the death of the Conqueror, Vega ignited the pyre that the Conqueror was placed upon. After his successor Aenys named his son Prince Aegon the Prince of Dragonstone, Visenya left in a fury on her dragon. Apparently, as Vega flew off, the moon turned red as blood. When Aenys eventually died, Visenya flew Vega to Pentos to collect her son Magor and proclaim him king. Magor, who at this point flew Balerion himself, joined his mother flying back to King's Landing, which set off riots throughout the city from terrified citizens. Soon enough, Magor's reign proved almost as bloody as the War of Conquest throughout said reign. Visenya would use Vega to obliterate the keeps of several houses. During Magor's war against the Fate Militant, Vega would have been used to shatter Old Town itself if the High Septon hadn't mysteriously died before this could happen. 
The Queen of the Dragons remained unridden for 29 years after Visenya's death, spending much of that time on Dragonstone and later taking residence in the Dragon Pit in King's Landing. It was in 73 AC that Prince Balon the Brave, after achieving knighthood, set out to follow his brother Prince Aemon and became a dragon rider claiming Vega. Vega, along with Craxis and Vermithor, burned the Dornish fleet that attempted to invade the Stormlands during the Fourth Dornish War in 83 AC. After the death of Balerion of Old Age in 94 AC, Vega became the last of the three Targaryen dragons who had fought in the conquest. Vega became riderless again when Prince Balon passed away in 101 AC. Vega's next known rider was Lady Lena Valarian, who had become a dragon rider before the age of 12. According to the maester at Driftmark, the seat of House Valarian, Lena loved to fly. When Lena married Prince Daemon Targaryen in 101.5 AC, they flew upon their dragons across the narrow sea to Pentos, Volantis, Kohor and Norvos. Everywhere they went, huge crowds came to catch a glimpse of Vega and Caraxes, Daemon's dragon. After Lena gave birth in 116 AC, Daemon brought both his own dragon and Vega back to Westeros. Lena and Daemon grew close with Daemon's niece, Rhaenyra Targaryen, and the three often flew together upon their dragons, Vega, Caraxes, and Cyrax. Unfortunately, Lena died early in 120 AC. It is said that Lena attempted to reach Vega in her final hour as to fly one last time, but she did not have the strength. Following Lena's funeral on Driftmark, the 10-year-old prince Aemon Targaryen claimed Vega as his own dragon. Of course, we experience a slightly different version on the show. In House of the Dragon, there was a scene where Lady Valerian will tell Viserys that Vega has not been seen for some time, but the dragon keepers believe that she had made her nest along the coast of the narrow sea. By this time, Vega's size was such that she was too large to remain in the dragon pit. And Lena says that traders in Spice Town on a native drift mark claim to hear her song at times, and that it sounds sad. Viserys then jokes, saying that even dragons can get lonely. More than a decade later, Vega is the mount of Lena herself, and Lena takes great pride in riding the largest known living dragon in the world, riding alongside her husband Daemon and his own dragon Caraxes. And sometime later, Lena suffers a difficult birth, with everyone believing the child must be cut out of her to survive, and unwilling to die in bed, she stumbles outside to find Vega, and before giving the command, Dracarys. Vega hesitates, unwilling to burn her rider, despite her repeated pain commands, and eventually she complies and unleashes her dragon fire, incinerating Lena to prevent a more drawn out and painful death. Days later, we see Vega sleeping on the beach of high tide, but she was awakened by Aemon Targaryen, who desires to ride the dragon. She initially ignores his attempt to mount her and goes back to sleep, but Aemon was persistent and tries again, and Vega nearly unleashes her dragon fire on him, but is successfully commanded by Aemon in High Valerian. Having now claimed and bonded with her, Aemon takes her for a first flight, though he nearly falls to his death having not properly fastened himself to the saddle. He is able to fly her around Driftmark. And later, during the royal family's return to King's Landing, Aemon rides Vega home. So from here, clearly we can see that HBO has put in a lot of effort to make sure that the scenes and also the connection between the rider and the dragon is somewhat emotional and also engaging. And they actually did a pretty good job with this. And now going back to the book and Dance of the Dragons. By 129 AC, Vega had grown nearly as big as Balerion had been during Aegon's conquest and had become the largest living dragon of her time. Prince Aemon flew on Vega to Storm's End so they could win the support of Lord Boros Baratheon for King Aegon II, King Aemon's brother. There, Aemon met with Prince Lucerys Valerian at Storm's End, hoping to gain support for his mother, Queen Rhaenyra Targaryen. Aemon was forbidden from attacking Lucerys while both were in Boros' castle, but was allowed to follow him outside. After Lucerys rose into the sky on his dragon Arax, Aemon mounted Vega and followed the young prince. The two dragons fought during a great storm over Shipwrecker Bay, and Vega quickly overcame Arax, whose severed head would wash ashore days later, along with the corpse of Lucerys. However, in the show, again, we can see some differences that was put in by the writers of HBO. 
After Luceris and Erex leave, Eamon pursues on Vega to scare him and take one of his eyes as revenge for losing his own shortly after he claimed Vega. After nearly snatching him several times, she loses track of Erex when the small dragon flies into a ravine, far too narrow for her to follow. But Erex, against Luke's wishes, turns around and blasts Vega with dragon flame. Enraged, Vega pursues ignoring Eamon as he desperately tries to regain control of her. Above the storm, Vega catches Arax in her mouth and being about five times larger than the younger dragon, she easily rips him apart. The showrunners did a very good job in recreating this heart-wrenching scene and it also goes to show that the dragons and their riders are deeply connected into a very emotional state. Now, for example, Luceris was fearful of Aemon and that feeling transferred to Arax. And the tiny dragon did what it was supposed to do. It was basically trying to protect itself and also to get away from Vega as well as Aemon. And in self-defense, it went and blasted Vega with dragon flame. Whereas Vega, on the other hand, it is able to read and understand the hatred that Aemon had for Luceris because he lost his eye. And when Vega a hardened and seasoned dragon, a warrior, gets blasted by a tiny little dragon, what are we expecting? And of course, she goes and chomps Arax into pieces. And Viserys was right all along. He wanted cooler heads to prevail among the notoriously hot-headed Targaryens, something that's much easier to accomplish when dragons aren't part of the equation. He goes to say, the idea that we control the dragons is an illusion. They are a power man should never have trifled with. Now going back to what actually happened after Arax and Luceris died, Prince Aemon would continue to fly Vega in battle during the civil war between King Aegon II and Queen Rhaenyra. During the battle at Rook's Rest, Vega and Aemon and King Aegon and Sunfire ambushed the dragon Melis and her rider Princess Rhaenys Targaryen. Melis was an old and large dragon and might have stood a chance against Vega alone but died from the combined assault. Vega was the only dragon who left the battle reasonably unharmed. The battle against Melis left Aegon II severely injured, leaving him incapable of rule and Prince Aemon was appointed regent. Aemon decided that the main threat in the war was Prince Daemon Targaryen, who was massing armies at Harrenhal. Aemon took Vega and most of the green forces from King's Landing north to attack Harrenhal, leaving King's Landing with very little defence. When Aemon and Vega arrived at Harrenhal, they found the castle undefended and empty, as Daemon had left some time before to attack King's Landing, after having lured Aemon and Vega away from the capital. After the fall of King's Landing, Prince Aemon and Hand of the King Kristen Cole no longer agreed on how to proceed during the war. Aemon took Vega on a one-on-one war of revenge. They burned much of the riverlands, starting with every wooden structure in Harrenhal. Vega caused more destruction than an entire army and severely harmed Rhaenyra's supporters in the Riverlands, though Aemon's decision to abandon the army under Kristen proved to be a strategic blunder. Without Vega to protect them, Cole's army in the east was later surrounded and destroyed in the Butcher's Ball, leaving the east wide open to Rhaenyra's forces. Aemon and Vega continued the destruction of the Riverlands and they became the terror of the Trident. And finally, the battle everyone was waiting for. After the first battle of Tumbleton, Daemon had word sent out that he and Caraxes would await Aemon and Vega at Harrenhal. On the 14th day of Daemon's vigil at Harrenhal, Vega appeared in the sky, carrying Aemon and his lover Alice Rivers. Aemon left Alice in the castle's yard and both dragons and their riders launched into the air and all four were killed in the ensuing battle above the god's eye. When the dragons locked together, Caraxes' jaw closed around Vega's neck and Daemon leaped from his dragon to Vega to put Dark Sister through Aemon's eye, and the dragons crashed into the lake. Some years later, after the end of the dance, Vega's body was recovered, with Aemon's armoured bones still chained to the saddle. Vega was 181 years old when she died, on the 22nd day of the 5th moon of 130 AC. Along with 18 other Targaryen dragon skulls, Vega's skull hung on a wall in the Red Keep's throne room. After Robert's rebellion, King Robert Baratheon had the skulls removed from the throne room and stored them in a dank cellar. In 284 AC, when Tyrion Lannister visited the capital for the wedding of his sister Cersei to Robert, he observed the skulls in the cellar, including Vega's. 
and in 298 AC, Arya Stark encountered the dragon skulls while passing through the Red Keep cellars. The Queen of the Dragons, Vega, fought in more major Westerosi wars than any other Targaryen dragon, the War of Conquest, the Fate Militant Uprising, and the Dance of the Dragons. In 299 AC, Daenerys Targaryen had three ships sent to her by Illyrio Mopatis, renamed to Vega, Meraxis, and Balerion, to tell the world that the dragons had returned. So there you go guys, Vega, the strongest, the largest, and the most experienced dragon in the House of the Dragon show, as well as in the Dance of the Dragons. I'm actually planning to do another video and that video is going to be about Vermithor, the Bronze Fury, the Dragon of King Jaehaerys. And if you loved this video, please help to subscribe to my channel and share the video with your friends and family. Your support means a lot to me and it will encourage me to continue doing videos like this. So till next time, take care and bye bye.